Hello everyone, TLSG here, back again with another Daily Marvel Snap video. So today we have the featured location, Lamentus 1. And for those of you that have played, this location is nuts. It creates some really good archetypes that wouldn't have been good otherwise. It further increases the consistency of certain things like Death Wave, because the cards that were destroyed in each deck count towards Death's discount. And so you can get some kind of crazy combos pretty consistently. And as with any featured location, you want to build a deck and tech around the location, but building a deck entirely around the location isn't always advantageous because you're going to see it a lot more often, but you're not going to see it every single game. So you need a deck that can still perform well outside of the featured location. And so that is where today's deck comes in. And we did cover a very similar deck before with the She-Hulk wave. She upgrades the consistency of Death Wave, and it's going to be no different with this featured location. So what we're going to be able to do with this list is we took out our Green Goblin from before and we added in Moon Girl. That's going to give us another high roll trigger. And so if we have Moon Girl and Death, we can play the rest of our cards in a way that we can duplicate our Death. On the last turn, we could potentially drop both She-Hulks and both Deaths. We could do two Deaths and a Chavez. We just have a lot of flexibility. You can tech some cards in for the location. So like a Black Widow is decent to drop on turn two if you happen to have it in hand and Lamentus one has not turned up. You have a chance of stopping the opponent from drawing into any additional resources, which would feed into Moon Girl duplicating the Mjolnir and then you could play all of those all at once. You just have a, uh, several options, but this list as is is gonna serve you very, very well. And if you want to see more gameplay outside of the Lamentus 1 location, because we all know that this featured location will not be here forever, I do have a very similar list that I ran recently. I'll leave a link to the video in the description below if you want to check out more. But for now, let's go ahead and jump over into a couple of games, and I hope you guys enjoy. All right, first up we have Donut, and the first location is Daily Bugle. It gives us their mojo. It gives us just a little bit of mojo. We're going to go ahead and play Yondu. That's going to destroy one of their resources. It's going to count to start discounting our death just in case Lamentus doesn't come up. But if it does, we don't want the hood because we want to have enough space to drop it. And the Yondu was created by Daily Bugle, so they're not running a death wave, I don't think. We don't know that for sure. We have our death and our She-Hulk. We don't have Moon Girl. We don't have any other like really big cards to lean in on. I think what we're going to do is we're going to set up like we're going to destroy the Daily Bugle lane. We're going to do Bucky Barnes over there, see what they end up pushing. Um, we'll do Bucky Barnes, we'll drop Hood somewhere else. We can destroy the one cost cards if we need to. This one's going to be tough. So let's go ahead and throw out our Hood and a Mojo to the left lane. Most likely, most likely we will end up uh, dropping our Killmonger but they drop an armor to protect this lane. We weren't, we don't have a destruction trigger, so we kind of pulled a fast one on them. Uh, we we pulled a we pulled a little bit of a doozy. I feel I feel proud of that one. Um, let's do the wave here. We're not going to have initiative going into this last turn, which is our biggest problem. Because um, if they have an arrow, then they can just outpace us entirely. So if we do wave here, oh no, this is turn four. Oh, we have one additional turn. Uh, let's go ahead and we will do our Killmonger here into a Demon Token here. On the next turn, we will drop our Wave, and that will reduce the cost of our She-Hulk. Actually, let's hold Demon for now. Let's hold Demon for now. We're going to save it for kind of a surprise last turn play. We're going to drop Killmonger. They snapped off of the fact that they were protecting this lane, but we don't have our Destruction Trigger, so we're we're not worried about it. Um, we do destroy our hood over here, so we get our upside back again. Let's go ahead and do the wave. That's going to reduce She-Hulk down to four. Titan should reduce it down to three. The two extra energy that we have will reduce it down to one. This is still going to be free, and then this will be four. And so we can, so we'll use five energy on this final turn to position our power in the most advantageous position that we can. We know that the opponent has a mojo because we stole their mojo from Daily Bugle. They hit us with a Professor X into the Titan location, which is uh, kind of scary. They could do a oh, they could do a destroyer here. If they do a destroyer here, they lose their Mister Fantastic, and we tie here. They could do a Spectrum. 
they could do a spectrum here that would be nine power pushing them to 21 this is going to be 12 and then uh, some additional if they don't play here and they play something here then we can win these lanes i think we're fine they snapped i don't i'm not going to double snap i'm not going to snap back because i'm afraid they would retreat at this point but i am fairly confident unless they have an arrow to pull our card from the daily bugle over into lamentus one we should have our win condition so they do play into the left lane. I expect a Spectrum. Yeah, we have the Spectrum. We are still gonna be able to outpace them in the left lane because of the Mojo bonus that we stole from them in the Daily Bugle. And then we win Lamentis very heavily as well. And so we're able to swing the four cube victory. That was a little bit scary. Um, with the Professor X lockdown, I wasn't anticipating the lockdown. So we got lucky. I am glad that we were able to pull it out. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Berserker 108. The first location is Wakandan Embassy, so if we see Lamentis, that's fine. If not, then that's also okay. They play a Korg, which sends us a rock into our deck. <clears throat> we get their death from the Daily Bugle. So what we are really, really hoping for here is that we can draw into Lamentis, we draw into our death as well, and then we can have four deaths that we can throw into the board on the last turn for a very, very surprising amount of power. And so Lamentis won, can we get our death? Death would be beautiful here. We don't. Unfortunately, we don't get our version of death. That is unfortunate. Um, so let's go ahead and play our death lock. Next turn, we can do something like a Killmonger and a Carnage. That would give us space to do our Moon Girl to copy our death. Um, and then we'll just look for our win condition from there. I, I don't know that two deaths is going to be enough. And it's... We know that they have death of their own, so we have to be on the lookout for that potential 12 power swing as well. And so they drop a hood that they got from us. So they drop the carnage that they got from us to destroy their hood. They, get, they now have a demon token in hand. So we're going to do Moon Girl to copy our death. We're going to have just enough hand size to copy our death. They can copy theirs as well. Oh no. And so now it really now so now it really comes down to where they drop theirs versus where we drop ours and so i'm going to drop our hood and carnage that's going to give us a one cost demon token in uh, in our hand we can use that uh, along with killmonger and our two deaths unless they drop a wave here on the last turn to push hopefully more power than the opponent can so the sentinel and this last one is a wave isn't it no it's an agent 13 that's huge because now they can do their double death of course but when they, oh, we have initiative. So they have two demon tokens to use. They have two deaths to use. If we didn't have initiative here, that'd be phenomenal. We could, we could swing a tempo advantage very, very heavily. But because we do, I don't think we're going to find the win condition. We're going to, we're going to end up losing this one most likely, but we are going to position our demon and our killmonger here. We're going to destroy their Korg. Hopefully they don't invest too heavily here. We're gonna put double. We're gonna we're gonna put both of our deaths into the daily bugle. I think that's the only way we're gonna overcome their death. Um, I really wish we did not have initiative going this last turn, and we probably could have positioned it to find ourselves in a way that we didn't. Um, but we'll we'll see if we can still find the win condition. They do a death over into Lamentis. They win that location. They do a death and a and a demon in mid they do a sentinel to the left it looks like they didn't have enough space in their hand to duplicate their demon so they only had one had they had two that three additional would have given them the tie in wakandan embassy and then we would have tied the tiebreaker between the daily bugle and lamentus we got lucky that they didn't have enough hand space to drop all of those cards and we were able to find the eight cube win condition all right next up we have matt and the last game we did draw into Lamentis and we played against Matt. We ended up snapping after Lamentis showed up and they ended up retreating. So we're going to see if maybe we can get a full game this time around. Uh, we know maybe not snap against Matt if we want to see the full game play out. We do have our death. So if we draw into Lamentis this turn, hopefully we get She-Hulk as well. Uh, we don't. But we do have Wave. We do have uh, our Moon Girl. We don't have any way to destroy any of our cards though so we're gonna have to really lean in and rely on our double death and it looks like we're gonna be able to do a double demon token as well and so let's go ahead and play our yondu and our hood maybe they run something that destroys these cards but we'll see 
Uh, they do drop an armor, which is going to keep, which is going to keep this lane protected. So I'm going to drop just Bucky Barnes here. Next turn, we will do a Moon Girl, and that will duplicate our Death and our Demon. And then on turn five, we can do one Demon, one Wave, and then on the last turn, we can do Death and Demon. Um, and so we're going to be able to do a pretty big power push that's going to be a surprising amount of power. And we did snap again, so hopefully they stick around for a while. And so let's go ahead and drop our Moon Girl. That's going to duplicate the cards that we have in our hand. We're going to have two Deaths, two Demons, two Waves. We're going to have, we're going to be making some Waves here. All right, so our Moon Girl comes down. Their Psylocke comes down. So they're ramping into a five cost card in this upcoming turn. I'm uh, I'm curious what they're going to be dropping. We're going to go ahead and drop both Demon Tokens. We're going to do Wave. We'll be able to drop both the Deaths and and our one wave on the final turn to do a pretty big power push and they skip here so they probably have an infinite i would assume We're, they're not gonna be able to, mm, they could have an infinite and a she hulk they might beat us here do they outpower us they could beat us they could have this they could have one death they could have one she hulk and they could drop both of those alongside a in, in, alongside an infinite. If they played into the fact that they knew we were going to drop wave, we might lose this one. We have to see this one play out. We have too big of a power push. I'm going to let it let it roll, but we might lose. So they do drop two cards: one in Weir Island, one in Lamentus. Let's see what they end up dropping. It could be a Magneto, but that's not going to be able to pull anything over. They drop She-Hulk mid. We're actually going to tie in Weir Island because we have one additional card than they have. We win in Lamentus 1. Oh no, the real Mysterio was in Weir Island. So we do lose Weir Island. We win the far left very, very heavily. And we win Lamentus 1 by 1. That was much closer than it needed to be. I'm glad that Matt stayed for that one. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right, next up we have Butt, and the first location is Onslaught Citadel. We don't have anything that benefits from that lane. They do hit us with an Iceman, which does disrupt our curve just a little bit. Um, we're going to shuffle our cards into our deck after turn three. So if we get Lamentus now, if we get Lamentus on the next turn, then we'll actually shuffle our cards after that next turn. Um, I'm going to go ahead and throw our Carnage onto the board. I know it's going to be good to destroy our Bucky Barnes, but I feel like we need to start getting rid of some of our cards. Because if we draw into Lamentus, I want to be able to have a space for all three cards rather than losing out on the potential of drawing into one. And we get both Moon Girl and Death here. So that is a huge, huge benefit to be able to drop. Let's go ahead and play our Bucky Barnes. We're going to be able to destroy this one with a Deathlock. And so they send us a Green Goblin, but that's okay. Um, if they're running a Galactus deck, then we're going to have a pretty decent push here. We are shuffling our cards back into our deck, um, but by the end of the game, we will draw into all of them. And so what we're going to do is destroy these this lane with our death lock. Next turn, we can do a moon girl. Then we'll have a double death to be able to play off of. Let's go ahead and snap here. I, I, we're going to try to bait them into staying. I I think they probably will end up retreating. That is the biggest issue I've, I've found with this location is that if you get a good hand, a lot of times your opponent just lays down and retreats because it's, it's very obvious if they have a winning chance or not. They no longer have that question of, am I going to draw that card I need from my deck or not? So... Victory. Case in point. So we were going to drop our Moon Girl. That would lead us into a turn six double death along with a double Nova and a Killmonger to just to buff up all of our cards by two, destroy their sunspot. We had a massive power push. It was a good call for the lay down from butt, but I would still like to see the end of in, see the ends of games. Let's go ahead and jump over into the next one. All right. Next up, we have the Isle of Silence. So ongoing abilities are not going to be in effect in this location. And so we're actually going to lean in. We're going to use our Nova. We're going to destroy that. We're going to try to not have initiative on the last turn so that we can destroy their Deadpool. Um, Deadpool in a Lamentus deck can get very, very high roll very, very quickly. And if we can make sure that we don't have initiative going into the final turn, then we can position ourselves in a in a, in a spot to destroy their Deadpool that they drop on that last turn um, and swing the game in our favor. 
We're going to go ahead and drop our Carnage and destroy the Nova. We don't know if we're going to draw into Lamentis or not. And so we're just going to start destroying cards where we can. That way, if we do draw into death, we're at a spot where we can just drop our Moon Girl. Um, and they use a Yondu. It destroys our Chavez. Luckily for us, that is okay. We now draw into Lamentis. And the three cards, neither, none of them are death, unfortunately. We do have Moon Girl, so we can do the double She-Hulk um, on the final turn. Let's do a Bucky Barnes and a Hood. Um, on turn four, we can end up doing a Deathlock. And then on turn five, we can do a Moon Girl that will have one additional energy. Those will be, oh, those will only be five cost. So we need to do the Moon Girl this turn. I would like to destroy this lane, but we we definitely need to use Moon Girl this turn or else we're not going to be able to. And so let's Moon Girl. Let's Moon Girl in the Isle of Silence. I think we will likely not have initiative. That is what we're shooting for is to not have initiative going to the last turn so we can drop our Killmonger and destroy their big last turn play. So we do have the double She-Hulk. Um, our cards cost one more this turn, so I think we actually just skip. We're going to save five energy. That's going to make She-Hulk cost one. That's going to make She-Hulk cost one. We can do our regular demon and the Killmonger. Of course, we would do Killmonger first. But that's going to give us a big push on that final turn. And we can we have the advantage of being able to position our power in a way that we want to to find our win condition. Ooh, so they skip as well. They have a 10 power Deadpool. They have initiative. So our, our Killmonger is going to be a little bit more effective here. So we're going to do a She-Hulk into Lamentis. I think because that one is a tie, they're going to invest power there. Um, we're also going to push a She-Hulk into the Dream Dimension to give us 10 power there. We're going to then use the Killmonger that's going to give us... Uh, it's going to give us a 2 power push in the Dream Dimension because right now it's it has the Hood there. It's also going to give them a negative 2. And we're just going to hope that we can win the far right and the middle location. We have a fair shot at losing this one because they did skip last turn so they could be doing a She-Hulk as well or a She-Hulk and a Death. They just have quite a bit of potential here. Let's hope that we can outpower them, though. They do three cards in Lamentis. Uh, the Death in the far left is fine. I mean, we won. But I think they misordered their Deadpool. Or they didn't realize it was the last turn, maybe? Why did they drop Deadpool and then Killmonger? They had to have misordered it. Either way, we had our Killmonger as coverage. But even if we didn't, we had the win because of the, the misorder of the play. Very interesting, to say the very least. But with that one, we are going to go ahead and end the video here. Such a strange one to end on. Um, but... I hope that you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to leave it a like and a comment down below. Tomorrow, we are going to be looking at rebuilding a Silver Surfer deck a little bit differently than we did with Mr. Negative. And so I will see you guys on tomorrow's video. This has been TLSG. Later.